It's about time I do a diorama here on the channel. And what better time than now with this beautiful cave entrance to wrap up our cave series with all sorts of details to check out, not only on the outside, but on the inside as well. Coming up right now on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is the fourth video in my cave series where we're going to be working on this cave entrance. I initially planned on starting from the outside in, working our way into the cave, but I've been waiting for about five weeks for some materials to show up, so we worked our way from the inside out. Now, this video has a lot of really cool techniques, a lot of cool things that I haven't shown yet on the channel, so whether you're building for tabletop games or dioramas, there's sure to be something here for everybody. All right, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so keeping consistent with the rest of this cave series, I'm not gonna use the Proxon for this entire video. So starting out, I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of two inch foam, stacking them on top of each other. We're gonna trace out the start of the indent to the entrance of the cave. Now, if you don't have two inch XPS foam, that's totally fine. Just grab some half inch XPS foam, one inch XPS foam, whatever you have laying around and glue it together because the way we're gonna cut this up, you're not gonna notice it anyway. Now what we've traced out is going to be the start of the indent or the entrance to the cave. And this is sort of where you need to let your creative side take over. There really isn't any right or wrong way to carve this first portion out. Now I have used the hot wire knife in this series, so if you have a hot wire knife, you could make use of it here. Although I like using the alpha knife because it's a little bit more jagged and it kind of goes along with the look of a cave, in my opinion, a little bit better than the smooth cut that you'd get with the hot wire knife. And just make sure that those line up somewhat close when you're done. Now to stick these together, all I'm using is some hot glue and you want to keep adding to this piece. You want to add to the back, to the top, enough so that you have enough area to carve out with your uh, alpha knife here in just a few minutes. If you want to pick up any of the products you see in this video, all the Amazon product links can be found in the description below. All right, so now all you're doing is just getting, again, creative with all of these cuts. If you find that there's a section that you want to have some more rock and you know have a nice smooth transition, just hot glue some more on and keep cutting away. And to keep consistent with the look of the stone in this series, I'm going to take that horizontal slashing motion on the rock and I'm going to gouge that out here in just a minute. We're actually going to do quite a few texturing techniques to this to get our final look. And don't be afraid if you take a little too much off because there's going to be a technique in here in a minute where we're actually going to add more stone back to this rock face. Alright, now we got to take out a portion of this entrance for the entrance to the cave using my trusty clay sculpting tool. Did not work here. It was way too uh, fragile for this. I almost broke it. Just cut some vertical slashes in there with the alpha knife. Use your fingers, a pair of needle nose pliers, whatever you have laying on hand to rip all the big chunks out. Then for the finesse pieces, you can grab that clay sculpting tool to kind of form it the way you want. Now you've seen this technique on my channel before. It's a pretty common technique for achieving like a vertical rock face. So all we're doing is making a few cuts there because we're gonna make a really neat looking water effect here in just a minute. This area that I'm tracing out is gonna be a little pool that a waterfall is gonna flow into. And you've seen this technique on my channel quite a bit. We're just gonna use an X-Acto knife to cut a few lines into the foam and pull out what we don't want with the clay sculpting tool. And just have fun with the alpha knife when you're carving into this foam to create these steps or any of these features. 
small little cuts at a time. You can always remove more. It's a little bit harder uh, to add. Now this section is going to be for the illusion of the stairs descending down into the cave. Just cut that whole section out. And then like before, we're going to use the alpha knife to cut some steps leading down. For this step right here, I would add a little parchment paper under this base. That way in case you get any hot glue there, you're not going to glue it to the table. And then just break out the trusty old aluminum foil and add some texture to the rock. Now you know I have to add some sort of light or some LED effect to this build. And what better way than a flickering torch leading down into the depths of the cave. I'll add a link up above to my LED torch video that will give you a really good insight as to how I use LEDs and batteries to add a lighting effect. And all we're doing here is cutting out that compartment so that we can add our battery and our LED torch. And try and get that cut as close as you can. That's gonna be the bottom, obviously, of the build. You're not gonna see it. As you can see, I was off a little bit. Not a big deal. Just use your pen, mark out where you need to make the correction, and cut that out. Now it's gonna be almost impossible to access and paint these stairs up completely once the uh, cave is actually glued onto it. So paint those black beforehand. Then you can Mod Podge the rest of the build. Make sure to get some hot glue on that very back strip right in front of where the pond is going to be so you can seal that up real nice. Then taking some of this patch and paint, we're going to seal all around the base. Now I wasn't crazy about all of those horizontal cuts in the stone and I had this patch and paint sitting right on my desk. I said, this is going to be absolutely perfect. We're just going to take some of that, fill in some of these cracks and the look turned out perfect, just the way I wanted it. We're gonna base coat this in some deco art uh, graphite gray, and then we're gonna do a super, super heavy like overbrush with this linen. I wanna go for a nice light stone for this cave entrance. Then we can do a light dry brush of slate gray. And in a lot of this series, I used the brown wash. But here I thought, no, I want to stick with the black wash because all these colors are so light. And, you know, with the cave entrance, you know, I, I wanted that darker black color. Now we can go over to our warm white. This is a really nice contrast to that black wash to just do some nice highlighting and we're almost done with the paint job on the entrance. Now for the interior, all I'm doing is mixing up some burnt sienna and black. I want it really dark on the inside and fill any cracks on the inside as well with some of that patch and paint. Now I had to add this onto the build. A lot of the organic material means a lot to me. This build means a lot to me. This is a juniper branch that my son and daughter picked for me when we were on a hike. So I wanted to kind of immortalize that into the build. I ended up having to break all this greenery off, but that's okay. We're going to address that in just a little bit. Now, while that is hardening up with that uh, glue wash, we're going to take some more tacky glue and paint it pretty heavy over this base. Now you're not going to see a lot of that brown, but that's okay. I did it just in case any was going to show through. And with a nice heavy coat of that tacky glue, we can add some gravel. Funny fact about this gravel, I collected it across the street from my house and we had some construction going on and they were doing some paving. I didn't realize they used that for a lay down yard the day they were paving. So when I put this in the oven to kind of kill any bacteria that was on it to dry it out, I ended up baking some asphalt in my oven. So my house smelled pretty uh, horrendous for a couple of days. My wife, <laughs> she wasn't too happy. So just make sure you know where you're getting your gravel and your sand from when you're getting it. And in my defense, it was kind of dark out uh, when I was doing that. So now all we're going to do is give this a little spritz of some rubbing alcohol. It's going to help our glue wash spread, as you can see, nice and easy over this. 
It's gonna help lock all that gravel in place. And I just use a super cheap brush just to kind of, you know, hit any spots where that wash didn't flow naturally. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of some dark, like chocolate brown uh, tile grout. And I did the same method here. I added a little bit of glue to the top of the stone as well before I added the tile grout. All right, now we need to vary the color up. We don't want everything to look monotone. So I'm gonna take a little bit lighter tile grout here than a brush and we're gonna kind of just work the colors together, keeping some areas quite a bit lighter than others. It's gonna make it look a lot more natural than the whole thing just being brown. Always try and work in layers. Again, doing the same thing to the top of the cave entrance. And then to lock this in, we're just gonna give it a little spritz. This time, all this is is water, it's not alcohol. Again, it's tile grout. So that's all that needs to be activated and lock in place. Now for the bottom of the little pond that we're gonna put in here, I figured why not go with some thick mud? I love using this stuff. So just coat the bottom of the pond in that. While that's curing, we're gonna take some uh, Vallejo uh, liquid effect here and just put some squiggly lines. We're gonna use these to help create the waterfall here in just a minute. Now this spray glue, I am a huge fan of. It dries or cures pretty quick. It's very sticky and it really holds every little bit of flocking when it touches it. It made it a lot of fun to work on this portion of the build. Again, we're working in layers here too. So as you can notice, I've got some really dark uh, flocking that's on there. Now I'm going to a lighter and I'm just gonna let it fall naturally into place. You can kind of picture what this would look like if I just left that dark green on there. You can see I'm actually doing three different colors here. We went from dark green to medium now to light. And make sure to get a little bit in all the nooks and crannies of all those tiny little ledges as well. All right, now this was a lot of fun. We're gonna grab a static grass applicator, adding a little bit of this glue again. We're gonna add some two millimeter, I believe it was two, two millimeter static grass. And you need to do this in layers. So once it cures, you don't need to wait long, just a few minutes, you can respray it and add more. And that's how you add height to the static grass. If I was to take seven millimeter, it would kind of lay flat a little bit. I went straight to the seven millimeter on this side because it's around where the pond was. And I did kind of want it to lay a little flat, almost like swamp grass over this whole section. All right, now a little bit of hot glue and we'll stick this right into place. And you'll notice that on the other side, I added another juniper branch almost to the front of the cave entrance as well. Now these are just a few pebbles I picked up from around the house. And we'll let those cure. Now we'll take some strips of that liquid effect. And as you can see, they're kind of like, you know, a little cloudy, right? But that's okay. When we add this water texture on here, it's gonna sort of glue these in place. And when we add that liquid effect back to this that's already cured, it's gonna turn it nice and clear all over again. You just gotta make sure that you get that liquid effect on both sides of this strip. So right now it doesn't look like it's turned clear on the back. Uh, when you put a few drops again on the back side, instantly this turns clear, it's pretty cool. Now for texture, for the water, we're just gonna use obviously this water texture and just stipple it right on top of that. Got ourselves a little reaper turtle. I didn't bother taking him off of his base. I just made a rock right on the base to match the ones that were already in the pond. I'm gonna glue him and stick him right into the water. Now you wanna work in very thin layers with this liquid effect because it really shrinks down. I had to do about four or five layers at least I think for this. Maybe it was even more. 
And all that is is a little four pound piece of fishing test line into some of that water texture. Let that cure. And then you can add more water texture and you can really have it kind of goop, I guess, onto that fishing line. It's gonna make a really cool looking splash effect. And then for some mist where that water is hitting, we're just gonna take a Q-tip, really fine pieces of it, lay it right into that water texture, it'll glue it right into place, and you'll be all set. All right, this was a really cool miniature that I got from Noble Knight Games. I was gonna use it on my Haunted House video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up above to that. Uh, but I didn't use it. It was you know, a little too much for the top of the house. Absolutely perfect location for it right here. I'll have a whole bunch of bats flying out of this cave. And all I did was just glue a flight peg to the back of them. And I love adding little details like these. They really stand out. All right, now these are some flowers. You can see them in the background. Uh, the piece that I'm holding here right now from Taylor and she's a follower of mine on Instagram. Thank you very much for sending these to me. I uh, really uh, made this diorama turn out absolutely beautiful. Now you wanna use hot glue as well when you're doing this. I tried using some tacky glue on a few portions of it. I tried using it here on this vine that I made I made these vines for my healing fountain video. I'll put a link up above to that. But the tacky glue doesn't really work too well for the heavier pieces. Just hot glue them right into place. For sections like this, you can see how fine those little uh, pieces of foliage are. Here, we can use tacky glue. And you're kind of stuck using tacky glue because hot glue would just show his big globs here. All right, now we take some clump foliage. We wanna cover where all of the vines start because it would look really funny if we just left them, you know, dead ending on the top of this stone. So we'll cover them up with some bushes. Again, you can see I'm using different colors here. It makes it more interesting to look at and more realistic. Now we're just adding a wash over the top of tacky glue and water. To get the right amount of mixture for this, you want it so that it doesn't seep right into the foliage. And we'll add a few leaves to it. I did the same technique in my uh, fantasy tree build. I'll put a link up above to that one if you wanna check that out as well. All right, these were some of my favorite flowers that she sent over. Actually, they all are. They all had really cool, um, unique things about them. But I thought that added a really nice bright color to the build. Okay, I don't know what this plant was, but uh, it was pretty cool. I ended up using some of this as well on my daughter's uh, Native American project uh, a few weeks earlier for some strips of like strawberry plants. So that was really neat as well. You just gotta get really creative with what you have. And this was a really cool plant. I think she called this one apple mint. It smelled totally awesome. I actually took the container that these were in and left it open on my desk while I was doing this video. It made my whole room smell like apples and mint. It was pretty cool. And these little guys I picked with my family when I was on vacation and they were a lot more closed up. They opened and sort of sprouted, but I think they look really nice in the water there. This little nest you can see in the background, it's the same as that dried brush. I wanted to make it out of that because birds would typically grab the same material in that area to make their nests. And I thought these little bluebirds added some nice color as well. And then to wrap it up, you wanna make sure to hit all the plants all the flowers and the craft with some matte finish to lock in their color.
So this video sent me on a quest to find some really nice foliage for the diorama. I was having a problem finding exactly what I wanted, so I left a message on my Instagram, Tabletop Witchcraft, head on over and check it out. And one of my followers over there, Taylor, saw my uh, request and she wrote to me and said, look, I don't know where you can buy them, but I've got a lot of really nice plants on my property. I'd love to send you a box full of them and maybe that'll help you out. And she did that, she sent them over and you saw them all in this video and they're absolutely beautiful. So I want to thank you for that. And while I have everybody, I just want to mention, head on over to her Instagram, maker underscore bakery. If you like baked goods, she has an amazing Instagram with some really beautiful stuff over there. As well, she also um, dabbles in pottery and makes some really nice D&D style mugs. So head on over there and check those out. All right, this wraps up the fourth video in the cave series. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me add to this. Consider picking up some merchandise, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification for further videos, all that good stuff. And consider heading on over to Patreon and supporting the channel there. The craft off, the first annual or maybe biannual craft off we're going to do in the, the coven is going to start in just a few weeks. And the winner there is going to get a really cool gift from Paladin Woodworking. Special guest judge Joe Levin from Encounter Terrain is going to judge the contest. So that's starting out in a few weeks. Joining the tier of the Coven or higher will get you entered into that, as well as access to our private Facebook page. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.